Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Crow Pi 2. Basically, what we have here is a Raspberry Pi 4 or Raspberry Pi 3B Plus powered laptop with a learning lab hidden inside. This is actually up on Kickstarter right now, and I believe there's around seven days left as of this video going live, but I was lucky enough to get one early so we could take a look at this thing and see what it really is and what it can really do. So like I mentioned, this is a Raspberry Pi powered laptop. You could actually use a Raspberry Pi 2, 3, 3B plus, or a 4, and I would recommend a 4. The model that I have here has the Raspberry Pi 4, 4 gigabyte model in it. And this is really created as a learning tool. Obviously, we have that Raspberry Pi 4 inside of here, which is going to give us access to Python coding and things like that. But besides the Pi itself, there's a lot of sensors built into this unit. We have an ultrasonic sensor, an RFID sensor, touch sensor, sound sensor. There's also an 8x8 LED matrix built in, a segmented sensor, and tons of other things underneath the keyboard. And we will take a look at that in just a second. But first up, we need to get this out of the box. Alright, so the first thing I notice when I pull this off is a full user manual. It's a pretty thick user manual. There's a lot of information in here. It is in English. We also have some foldable cardboard Minecraft blocks, and I believe these are going to work with the RFID tags. We'll get a bit deeper in here, and as you can see, we have the Crow Pi 2 laptop itself and a ton of accessories. We have some USB SNES style controllers because we can run retro games on here with RetroPie, Laka, or Bado Serra. Next up, we have the power supply, and unfortunately, the Crow Pi 2 does not come with a built-in battery, so you will have to provide your own. We have a little accessories bag here with a ton of different wiring for our GPIO, and we also have some more standoffs. It also comes with a wireless mouse, and down here at the bottom, we have a lot of accessories, or add-ons, because these can interface with the Crow Pi 2. So first up, we have a moisture sensor. We also have a stepper motor, a little servo. I believe these are the RFID tags, and we also have a little DC 5 volt motor with a fan attachment. And it looks like we have another little bag in here. We have another micro SD card and an adapter for a Raspberry Pi 3 or a 3B Plus, because like I mentioned, this is using the Raspberry Pi 4 right now as it sits. And finally, we have the Crow Pi 2 itself. So here it is. As you can see, I mean, it's a bit thick. We have that Raspberry Pi right here. It's got the USB 3.0 port, so we know it's a Raspberry Pi 4. We're on back. We have a little bit of ventilation, and we have a little battery compartment slash component compartment. If you want to add a battery to this, you can throw it in this compartment, but unfortunately, I don't have any power banks that will fit properly in here, so I just have to set it off to the side. Over on the right-hand side, we have our power button, volume control, headphone jack, and our power input. Overall, I personally do like the design, I just wish it wasn't as thick, and I completely understand, because there is a lot of stuff in here, as we'll see in just a second. But once we open it up, we get a look at this keyboard. We have an 11.6 inch 1080p display, and the keyboard is actually detachable, and all of our development components are underneath this keyboard. This is actually a 2.4 gigahertz keyboard. It does come with a dongle that you'll need to plug into the side of the Pi. But as you can see, underneath this keyboard reveals a lot of awesome goodies for the Crow Pi 2. And all of the displays, sensors, and buttons are accessible from the operating system. This does come with a modified version of Debian with everything we need built in. And it's actually really awesome the way they've set this up. And this does offer cooling for the Raspberry Pi 4. There's a fan built in, but we have our LCDs here, our line displays, we have some extra buttons, an LED matrix, ultrasonic sensor, touch sensor, RDFI tag reader. There's just a lot of stuff built into the Crow Pi 2, and this is actually really great for learning. Let's go ahead and turn this on for the first time. I'm going to hold the power button on the side for about two seconds, and the Raspberry Pi 4 should start booting, and we'll see some activity on the built-in display. It's an 11.6 inch 1080p display, and it looks really good for a little laptop like this. And I can actually hear the built-in fan turning on. I mean, it's not terribly loud, but it is noticeable. So when you first boot this up with their modified operating system, you're going to be greeted with a screen that looks like this. It's very user friendly, but if you do want to get into a strictly desktop operating system, you can always close out of this. And you'll basically be running Raspbian, otherwise known as Raspberry Pi OS. So you can use this as a laptop. I mean, you have a web browser, you have everything you need built into this operating system. But we're going to head back here and go to learning. You do have to sign up for an account. You don't have to put an email or anything in. It's just on their Crow Pi website, I guess. I've already created my account. I'm going to go ahead and log in. Once I'm properly logged in, we'll head back to learning. 
And as you can see, we have two options, Python or Scratch. We're going to go over Python real quick. And I really, really like the way they have this set up. As you can see on screen, it gives us the layout of the laptop itself. And over on the left hand side, we have a lot of different lessons that we can take. It gives you a nice walkthrough on how to set everything up to get these little projects or exercises up and running with Python. And this is perfect for kids or adults who've never used Python before. We'll go to the very first one up here, and this is just a Python introduction. It's got a little screen assistant, and it's a step-by-step -step process. So every time you click next, your next step will be listed. It's going to tell you exactly how to do it and why you're doing it to get this Python code up and running. And personally, I think they've really hit it out the park with this lesson plan here. The way this is set up, it's so easy to use. I mean, any kid could get on here and start coding with Python. Now, they do give you the steps you need to input, but they explain exactly why you're doing it. So I've already completed a couple here, and this is the buzzer lesson. So every second, the buzzer will go off, and you can actually adjust this to your liking. And as you can see, they have a bunch of different lessons here, and it'll actually save your progress. So if you don't finish something up, don't worry, you can back out of it. It'll save exactly where you left off. Another cool feature about this learning interface here is the project section. Now this doesn't exactly teach you how to do it, but you could go through and check out the documentation if you want to. But these are already kind of demo pre-configured Python scripts just to give you an idea of what this thing can do. We're going to go with ultrasonic sound. And once we're in here, it gives us a brief description of what this script does and what sensors we're using. This one happens to use three, the LED matrix, the ultrasonic sensor, and the buzzer. And these scripts are a bit more complicated than the ones in the learning section, but they are available and you can follow along and do this if you'd like. So if the CrowPie software isn't something that you want to be running on this laptop, then you can always change it out really easily. We can pull the bottom off here. We have full access to the Raspberry Pi. The display on the laptop itself is running over HDMI, so any operating system that's compatible with the Raspberry Pi will work on this unit. I have an extra SD card here with RetroPie installed. I've already set up a few games. I'll go ahead and place it in here. We'll pop the cover back on and get this booted up. So this version of RetroPie that I'm running here is fresh off the RetroPie website. No modification was required whatsoever to get this up and running on the CrowPie 2. Like I mentioned, the display here is an 11.6 inch 1080p display running over HDMI, so it's going to work from the Raspberry Pi 4. I'm just using one of the included controllers here. I'll move in a bit closer so we can get a better look at the screen. If you want to use something like this for retro gaming, it's super easy to set up. You can use RetroPie, Laka, Botocera. There's tons of different retro operating systems for the Raspberry Pi that will work on this unit. The controllers that came with this are super cheap controllers. I mean, you can pick these up a dime a dozen on eBay, but they will work out for lower end games. And if you want to go with something a little higher end, like let's say Dreamcast, you'll probably want to add your own controller. And one of my favorites is the Apex Fly Digi because it comes with the 2.4 gigahertz dongle and I don't have to do any setup. The Raspberry Pi recognizes it as an Xbox 360 controller and I'm totally wireless here. And since we're using the Raspberry Pi 4, we do have access to the Redream emulator. So we have full speed Dreamcast on the Crow Pi 2 with that Raspberry Pi 4. So in the end, I do love the idea behind the Crow Pi 2, but I wish there was a few things that were changed. Mainly, the form factor here. As you can see, this thing is definitely thick, and I know it's a bit hard to cram a Raspberry Pi 4 inside of here and not keep it super thin, but I do think they could have went down a little bit. The next obvious thing is, this is marketed as a laptop and there's no included battery. And we can add an external battery. I have a 10,000 mAh quick charge battery here, but unfortunately, the only port that will support a battery on the side of this is a micro USB port, and that's just not going to put out enough amperage for the Raspberry Pi 4 and the screen. I've tested several power supplies and battery packs, and no matter which one I use over micro USB, I'm still going to get that lightning bolt with the Raspberry Pi 4 and that 11.6 inch screen. Because after all, the Raspberry Pi 4 itself is rated for a power supply at 3 amps, plus we have this screen built in, which is going to pull another, I'd say, half an amp up to an amp, depending on the brightness on this thing. But most micro USB cables and chargers are rated at about 2.4 amps. I have seen them go up to 3 amps, but that's a really high quality micro USB cable. And even then, we're still right there where the Raspberry Pi 4 needs to be, 
without factoring in the screen. So no matter what battery pack or wall charger I use with a micro USB cable, I'm still getting that lightning bolt which indicates low power to the Raspberry Pi 4. I still want to spend a little more time with this. I'm going to be searching for a battery that's compatible with the compartment on the back of here, and maybe I can find something that will put out enough amperage for the screen and the Pi itself. But if you're interested in learning more about the Crow Pi 2, I will leave links to their Kickstarter and website in the description. Keep an eye on the channel because I will have one more video coming up, and if there's anything else you want to see running on the Crow Pi 2, just let me know in the comments below. But like always, thanks for watching.